Hello everyone. My name is Jashan Manigandan, and I'm going to be talking about choosing a mobile test automation framework. So a bit of context. So with test automation for mobile specifically, there are a few different types of frameworks, as I said. So the most famous one being Appium. Um, there's the native ones, which is Espresso and XUI tests. And recently for React Native apps, uh, there's a new one called Detox. Um, everything addresses a different problem. And I'm going to be talking about what solves, what doesn't solve, and which one would fit you in a given scenario. So, um, so as I said, I'll be speaking in, based on my past experiences. So it's mostly about how I felt about the tools. Uh, how I actually address this talk is by basically testing one feature in all of these four frameworks. So this, this following talk is about how each and every framework differ in my experience of testing that particular feature and what was the challenges that I, I faced during this. So let's get started and see what the feature is. The feature is pretty much trying to test this list and see if I can find an element in there. So trying to keep it simple, this example that you're seeing is from Detox. Um, so you can see that when I run the Detox script, it would actually um, run the test and it would actually scroll to a particular element I wanted to find and make sure that I, that element is present there. So you can see that the test coming through and you can see the screens popping up and it will scroll you to a particular element and it will make sure that the element is present. So you can see here that it was able to scroll and it was able to reach that particular element in there. Let's start with the experience that I had with Appium testing this exact same feature. It's a quick context on what Appium is. Um, it's an open source tool. People who work with um, Selenium would have would find this pretty similar. Um, and, it's, and it's really easy shift to go from Selenium to Appium because it, it pretty much follows the same standards and everything. So where does Appium fit? So where can one expect to use Appium? So when you're new to test automation in mobile, or in general, Appium is a good way to get entry because it supports multiple languages. There's a really good community around it. And, and, and as I said, there's different types of languages it supports. Um, it tests from a black box view, so you don't need to understand too much about how Android works or iOS works. It's just pretty much a test automation framework which will help you test both. Um, and you don't need a lot of support for this one because Appium has a lot of tools that can get you started. and um, and a lot of sub documentation, how you can get salary scheme. So there's not a lot of dev support that you might need uh, to work with the framework because you all you need is an output file um, that that's the developers can provide you either via the CI or manually, and then you can use that uh, file to actually go and write your test scripts on top of. So in terms of getting started with Appium, um, this one is for the uh, Appium server. So you have an Appium server running locally and from there, you can just write a test either in any of the languages that you like. So this one is a JavaScript test. Uh, you can say which Android device that you want to test or iOS device you want to test, and you can pretty much start writing your tests in there. So it's as, as easy as it sounds. Um, there's a lot of community support around it as well, and a lot of tools support Appium-based scripts to, to run in the device farms and things like that. So what can't Appium do then? So as I said, Appium is more of a black box testing because it tests from a user's perspective. Uh, it doesn't know a lot about what's happening within your code. So it's quite hard to pass in test data to a test scripts because um, say, if you, say for example, if you want to open up a screen and have custom test data in there. So things like that cannot be done with Appium, whereas you can use other tools, native tools to do that. Um, so if you want to test different scenarios, say, for example, pass, fail, error screens and things like that, it will be harder to do it because you can't manipulate your screens as much. So you need to actually replicate the scenarios by either having proxies running or, think, uh, or finding a way to do that. So setup can be harder, especially on the CI because of the signings and all that. So if you're quite new to it and trying to set up a pipeline. It might be quite challenging, but now there are quite a few tools that you can use when it comes to CI, like um, Bitrise, uh, which have a lot of support for Appium, but it still is a bit of a learn curve in there. If you're expecting, if you have a very last, a very vast um, 
test suit where it runs for a quite a bit of time and it just in different scenarios, uh, Appium might struggle to do a little bit because what Appium does is it calls the native tools and with native tools actually does it. So there's a performance lag there. So if you're much concerned about performance, um, yeah, you might need to have uh, an eye on that and see if it's if it's actually causing an issue for you. And Appium's code sits separately. It's not part of the code base that the developers work on. So it's just kind of a separate thing. So you, it feels isolated and there's no way to actually know when changes happen in the UI and things like that. So that's something to be aware of as well. So in terms of both collaboration and maintenance, this can seem a little bit um, isolated. So sometimes you might have to write the same test in two different platforms. So sometimes you can't just have the same UI in both Android and iOS. Um, so in those cases, you might have to write the test twice, even though in Appium you can write one test and make it run in both platforms. That might not always be the case. Cool, so let's jump into one of the native test frameworks and see what we can, um, what the experience was writing the same test. So XUI test, um, so XUI testing is um, an iOS and a macOS framework. So it comes out of the box. There's nothing uh, new, new to install. Um, so this one pretty much takes care of the iOS side of things, but you can't use the same thing to run Android because this is specifically built for iOS by Apple. So the, the scenario you'll be using this in is where you expect a bit more with UI testing. You want to be more performant. You want to write more different scenarios and you're a bit more involved in the code. Um, so that's when you can use uh, XCUI test. So, and this is skill set requirement as well. You can't use any language. It has to be either Swift or Objective-C. So mostly Swift. Um, and it's native testing solution for iOS, as I mentioned. So specifically for iOS built by Apple, it comes out of the box net code. And in terms of support, you kind of get a lot of support from the devs because they actually work in the same repository in the same code base. So they might be able to help you with it in terms of reusing the unit testing stuff that they've built already or things like that. So you can have helper functions that can sit both in UI and unit testing frameworks. So that's a good add-on. So what does it look like to write a test? So if you look at this example, um, it, you didn't need to have any additional libraries or anything. You can just jump in and write a test for it. Um, there's not much that you need to do here. Um, and the, uh, once you understand the language a little bit and you understand the setup a little bit, then things will become easier. So given the native solution it is, we'll check what can't XUI tests do. So as I said, it's more native to iOS and Mac OS. Um, so it's not for Android. You can't use it in a cross-functional setup. And there's a learning curve for Swift. Um, and then there's also context switching between iOS and Android because you most likely are going to be working on the Android version as well. So you can't be writing tests in just one platform. You might have to do it again using the different platform for Android. So concepts like hermetic testing can work, but um, you'll need buying and support from dev. So hermetic testing to, to be a very bit short is testing within the scope of your app itself. So as I was talking about in the Appium section where, where you can't manipulate some scenarios in Appium here, because you have control over the code, you can pretty much pass and test data of any kind, or you can set up error scenarios to happen within your test itself. So you can have a lot of scenarios tested within the context of XUI tests, but there might need a little bit of refactoring that needs to happen uh, in the way that the code has been built. So it's easy to pass in that test data and, and replicate some error scenarios. So that's what hermetic testing means. And it's very much possible in native testing, but uh, you need some support from the developers and the teams to understand that you, know, you, need to be, you need to build the code in a way it's much more testable. It's a good add-on to have testability as one of the aspects but there's a little bit of a work that has to be done around them. So that's XUI test for you. Now let's jump in and see what the Android version of a native test would look like. So that's called Espresso. So according to the Android website, um, use Espresso to write concise, beautiful, and reliable Android UI tests. So let's see if it actually is more reliable and concise. Um, the scenario that you would be expected you expected to use Espresso is, as I said, for a more native testing scenario where you want a little bit more about unit testing, you want to be more performant, 
Uh, you need to pass in test data and have hermetic testing and all that, all that kind of stuff. And skill set wise, you will need either Java or Kotlin. Um, again, as I said, if you want to go on the native route, you might want to learn Swift for iOS and you might need to have Java or Kotlin in one of these um, in your tool sets as well. And it solves native testing solution for Android. Um, and you don't expect a lot of dev support because um, it's it's pretty straightforward in terms of how to get started. Um, and yeah, this there's this pretty uh, a lot of tutorials around where you can pretty much go and start writing your tests on your own. So it's pretty similar to Appium because you know if you're coming from that Java mindset, it might be easy for you to get adopted. Um, it will be much more easier than learning XUI tests as well. So what does it look like um, in terms of getting started? Again, as similarly, because this comes out of the box, there's nothing that you need have to do. It comes out of the box. Uh, you can just pretty much start writing the unit test without having to add any additional libraries or additional tools like, like that you do for Appian. So in terms of what can't Express or do, uh, it's native to Android, as I mentioned. Um, as I said, you might need to have a different framework for iOS, uh, same issues like context switching between iOS and Android. Um, the same problem as hermetic testing, it will it can definitely work. You can pass in different test, test data sets within your test without having to do any more, any proxy or stuff, um, but you will need the code to be in a position where it's mockable. Um, and, and that's, yeah, and that's pretty much with um, Espresso. Finally, with detox, um, as the detox is, is uh, something that's built from the ground up to test React Native alone. So you can't write um, you know, Android or iOS specific tests. You can write it for React Native and it would run the tests on both Android and iOS. So where does it work for you? So if your team is working extensively on just React Native apps, this is a great fit. It uses JavaScript. It's pretty straightforward to write something. Um, and it has a gray box approach, even though if it's not fully um, black box or fully white box, you can still have some sort of um, customization in terms of how you pass test data, how you mock some dependencies uh, and things like that, because you still have control over your code and it sits within your code. Um, Today's are willing to support with debugging because um, that's, that's a scenario where you can pretty much use detoxing. So how do you get started? Uh, so you might need to get started with just installing detox as part of your tool set. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much like you, you can use Jest to, to write tests. If you're coming from a web background, it might be quite easy for you to get started. Um, and yeah, it's quite, it has its own way of writing tests in terms of selectors and everything, uh, but just like another web framework. So you won't feel very detached if you're coming from a web background. So in terms of installation, it's just adding uh, detox CLI globally so you can run those tests. And some of the challenges you might come across when you're trying to use uh, detox, this is a gray box test. It sits in the middle. It's not too bad, it's not too great as well. Um, setting up can be tedious, as I was mentioning in terms of setup and debugging, it can be quite a bit of a setup when it comes to CI. But if you're using Expo, I think it, it might be quite easy in terms of setup because it's uh, Expo has been quite good in terms of managing your React Native apps. So if you're using that, um, there's a lot of tools out there to help you. Um, and it's not as performant as compared to native test frameworks because again, as I said, um, this is something specifically built for React Native. It's not a native uh, a tool to actually test uh, iOS and Android apps, but if you're not too worried about the performant aspects of it, it will still work for you. And it works great on React Native, and you just need to realize that it only works on React Native. It's not built for any other tooling. Um, but if you are a React Native shop and only deal with web apps and React Native apps, this is this is the framework for you. Just make sure what context and what problem you're solving, and try to pick the tool that might suit you the the best, because. Um, yeah, everything everything works. Everything work can work in a production environment without any problems. Just that like your team should be open to adopting a tool like that, and you should be in a position to actually spend that time to actually upskill on it or um, set it up to make sure it's running in the long term. 